This is the continuation of chapter 14. This is part two. We will continue reading at the top of page 201. Let us begin with chapter 14, part two of the Templeton Twins had the best idea of them all. Let us begin. The twins cheered and slapped their father on the back. Then John and Abigail got into the rear seat. Casey got in next to the professor. In the front, all the humans buckled their seat belts. Casey jumped into the professor's lap and they drove briskly out of the woods. They reached the main high highway and stopped. The professor looked in one direction and then the other. I'm not quite sure where we are, children, he said. Look, Abigail said. She pointed ahead of them and up there flying at about the level of the treetops was Dean D. Dean in the personal one-man helicopter. That way, John cried, follow him. Of course, it was impossible to literally follow Dean De Dean since he was not following the highway. That's the point of, of, of a flying machine, you see. You don't have to stay on roads, but that didn't matter. As long as he was heading in the direction of the campus of Tick Tock Tech, they knew which roads to follow. The professor hit the gas and they zoomed off. As they drove, he asked, but why are we rushing? Shouldn't we stop and call the police? We don't have time, John said. It was a race between the Templeton twins and their father and their ridiculous dog. And Dean D. Dean, the car had the advantage of being faster than the personal one-man helicopter but the helicopter had the advantage of being able to go directly to his destination in a straight line, without turning from road to road, and most important, without having to stop at stop signs and red lights. Neither John nor Abigail was sure they would make it. At one point, Abigail looked wildly around the dashboard of the car until she saw what she was looking for, a clock. It was broken. Oh, Papa, what time is it? She asked. The professor looked at his watch. It's 12 minutes before. Four, dear, why? Abigail looked at John. We don't have much time, John said. Papa, can you drive faster? The professor drove faster and soon they arrived. They turned into the entrance of the campus, which was, as usual, deserted. They drove to Jerry Hall and parked in front, just as Dean D. Dean floated into view. When he saw the metallic blue car waiting for him, he gave such a start that he almost dropped the controls and plunged into the ground. But he recovered and stopped, hovering about six feet, 60 feet in the air over the center of the main squad. Go after him, Papa, John said. Drive into the grass. The professor hesitated. Is, is it, is that truly necessary, he asked? Yes. Please, Abigail said, and then we have to get out and tell him we want to give him the papers. Abby, for goodness sakes, why would we want to do that? Oh, hurry, Papa, drive out to where he is before he gives up and just flies away. Professor Templeton made a look of doubt and confusion then slowly drove the metallic blue car up and over the curb and onto the grass and down a small slope and out onto the big broad grassy field where Dean D. Dean remained hovering. 
I will now pause and permit you to guess what is going to happen next. I seriously doubt that you will be able to do so. Moreover, if afterwards you tell me that you were able to guess correctly what did in fact happen next, I simply will not believe you. Why should I? Nonetheless, now is your chance. Go on. Guess. Questions for review. What do you think will happen next? Number two. Did you think of that yourself or did you have help? Number three. Why should I believe you? That is the end of chapter 14.